Hey, everybody. Well, this is just a porch chat. Um, it's, uh, it's been a year, hasn't it? <laughs> um, last two years have been quite a couple of years for us. Um, I'm sitting down today, um, having my birthday chat here. Uh, two years ago last month, we had the accident that broke my left leg. Clean break straight across right under the knee, both bones. It's a blur how it happened, obviously, because <laughs> you know when something like that happens, it happens so fast, you don't have time for your brain to process what's going on. And uh, yeah, cutting a tree shouldn't have been that difficult. We've done hundreds of trees. Um, it was actually this big around, just like that, not very big, uh, had no limbs, no leaves, just a trunk that wasn't even that tall. And it had been dead for a long time. But you know what? Tree cutting is very dangerous. And those things go rogue and they go directions you never could predict because you can't see what's inside the trunk, what knots and all, and they, that can make them twist. And of course, you know, it, it, it fell, it didn't detach from the bottom. Uh, the layer, the cambium layer were still attached on the underside of it. And it, it hung up on a tree on the driveway. And um, I most of you know this story, but new subscribers don't. Um, I'll say go back through my videos for two years. Um, and as my husband is cutting it, cutting through the last cambium layer, I stepped back, okay? I was kind of, it was on a slope next to the driveway, one long, wasn't far from the driveway. And the, and the gate, and uh, I was on a slope, and I'd step down the slope a ways to get out of the way, because I know how trees can be. And when he cut it, I expected it to kind of hit the ground and the top of it to roll off the other tree. That's not what happened. Um, and it's such a blur, but next thing I know, I'm on the ground. And what happened was, the butt end came up and it flipped toward me. And as it flipped toward me, it actually scraped my head, which I didn't even realize when it happened. It's like, it wasn't until later that I felt, wait a minute, that thing hit my head. <laughs> uh, scraped and it came down on my shoulder here, threw me onto my back. Well, how it, <laughs> how it came down on my right shoulder and broke my left leg is kind of a mystery. But what I think happened is, I think when it came down, it pushed my body down and it, it snapped the leg. Um, and I, I'm guessing that's what happened. Funny thing is, I didn't even, I didn't even pull a muscle. <laughs> Nothing. And of course, my husband wants to get the wheelbarrow, the big rubber made wheelbarrow, to let me scoot back in so he can get me to the car to take me to the emergency room. Um, and I'm pulling my knee, going, "This feels loose. This is something. It did something to my knee." Well, that's what I thought at the time. And um, he said, "I'll get the wheelbarrow." I said, uh, "This is not. No, no, we." you're gonna to have to call an ambulance because I can't even scoot. I can't let go of my leg. It feels like it's gonna just fall apart. Um, so anyway, ambulance came, took me, anyway, clean break across. And they put me in a boot and gave me painkillers and, and said, you know, um, th this got me to, I had to get to a surgeon and all that. And he said, well, I think it'll, if as long as it can stay, stay stable, you know, the, it was a clean break across and doesn't shift I think you can heal in the boot. Well, yeah, that didn't work out so well. After a week, when I went to see him, he's like, he, he said, it's start, starting to displace, and he tried to pull my leg straight, and I the scream that I let out, he's like, oh, we can't do this. He said, he called his nurse, he said, we, we need to get her a surgery. Anyway, but anyway, that was two years ago in October, the first week of October. I recovered very quickly, compared, uh, according to the surgeon. I mean, I, he had to stabilized with the plate and screws and all that. So I got two sets of plates and screws in that leg. One on the ankle from 20, 2012 and one under the knee. And he didn't repair the little bone. He said, he said, that's just spare parts. He said, if it was at the bottom, it has to be repaired at the top. You just let it go. Well, now it has a nice little, under the knee is this bone that sticks out there uh, and makes my leg a very weird shape up there. But anyway, um, and I recovered fine. And I didn't do home health 
health care uh, physical therapy. I did my own because that was in the height of the COVID crap. And uh, I wouldn't allow her to come back to my house repeatedly after, you know, she wouldn't remove her mask, which I said, I said, you're at home. We're, there's no way sick here. You can take that off. Oh, we can't do that. I said, are you vaccinated? <laughs> So we're not talking about the COVID vaccine. This is just a, recounting a story, YouTube, okay? And this is my story, and you can't tell me it's not. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she she said she was, and I said, well, I don't need you anymore. I don't want, no. So we sent them home, and I did my own physical therapy. And I recovered fine, and, and it's all okay. And uh, so, anyway, now I just have a nifty scar that's faded a lot, so, but that's okay. But that's been, that was Two years ago and ever since then after recovering from that uh, my husband's gotten worse he had to take care of me even in his condition so you know that's life has been really difficult and we still planted the gardens I still had the chickens and uh, which I love so uh, that's been that was quite a trial um, and you don't it's I find it interesting that I didn't even pull a muscle that was the only thing that happened to me was the broken leg I mean I didn't it could have been worse. I mean, it, it just really, every time I, I think about it, I shudder because that thing could have come off and hit me right in the face. It could have caused brain damage. It could have smashed in my face. It could have just killed me outright, and it didn't. So I feel very blessed to have gotten away that easy, and that wasn't easy. Uh, so, you know, we have to be very cognizant of injuries here on this homestead as you uh, really should be all the time but definitely when you're older and don't have a lot of help um, I can't I don't have five kids I can say hey could you go feed the chickens or can you can you go fill the waterers it's, it's us and that's it um, but anyway um, and you know last year about this time or right before this was the big chicken feed controversy I didn't have a controversy because I've been breeding chickens for 19 years. I didn't have no controversy. But apparently some of the newer chicken keepers, and I'm talking about up to three years old, even four years old is fairly new, but up to three years old, you've not experienced the cycle of a chicken unless you've had them for about that long. Um, they were all up in the air about how tractor supply feed was, was stopping all their chickens from laying, and I, it's like poppycock. Seriously, I don't buy tractor supply because they have a reputation for their moldy feed. It's probably a storage issue. And I don't like their feeds. Their feeds are almost all vegetarian feeds. I like animal protein in my feed, which I may not even be able to get at a certain point because of the pressure to take animal feeds out of animal products out of chicken feed as well as us humans. Sorry, that's what I eat exclusively. So that ain't happening. Um, but that was the big chicken controversy last year. And about this time, you know, it's like, well, all, all my chickens quit laying at once. I said, that happens. It happened to me this year. I got chickens of all ages. All ages. They all eat the same feed. Exactly the same feed. All of them. Bantams, the breeder quality. Because I get decent feed, right? So uh, nobody listened. They, they preferred to hold on to a re almost religious belief that this happened because somebody else said it did. And that spread like wildfire. And I tried to contradict that, counter counteract that misinformation. That was misinformation. Um, but people believe what they want to believe. They do it in chicken keeping. They do it in religion. And they do it in politics. <laughs> and you know that, right? Um, but, you know, my chickens, I said, no, that's not unusual. Mine just quit. Yeah, and they all did it at once because all of a sudden they're all molting. And boom, the faucet turned off and there were no more eggs. Same thing happened this year. I've been having to buy grocery store eggs. You know that, right? And uh, yeah, just yesterday I got a half a dozen eggs. All of a sudden a bunch of these chickens are coming back into lay. I've got about seven or eight laying, I think, total. But um, some don't lay every single day. So that's what I got. I have about seven or eight laying and I got six eggs yesterday. I haven't seen there, for a while, there was like one egg, no eggs, two eggs, for a long time. Now they're all finished with their molt. Now, Scarlet, you know, she's, she's dying as far as I'm concerned. I think she's dying because of the bloat. Reproductive malfunctions are a big thing with hatchery stock. I, I, that's been my experience every single time that I've gotten hatchery stock, which 
I didn't do it for the longest time after the first bunch died off, just like boom, 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 one after the other. Uh, all reproductive egg yolk keratinitis, internal laying, all that kind of crap. Um, if you want to know, if you're new to chickens and you want to know about all the reproductive malfunctions, I do have um, a video, I forgot what it's called, laying issues of, what, reproductive issues of laying hens or something like that. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the video. Um, but have a very informative with pictures about what you find inside the hen after they're dead. Okay. That you, you got to have a scientific mind, okay? You've got to have a questioning mind and, you know, inquiring minds want to know, well, if a hen drops dead, I kind of want to know why, you know, even though most of those, most of those, I already knew they were on the way out. So that happens. It happened this year for, to me, I have chickens of all ages. I have them up to, um, 12 years old. Mina is 12. She's not laying. She hasn't laid in a couple of years. She did like an, one egg a couple of years ago. Um, and you know, then I've got the next down is eight and a half years old. Well, one of those is laying right now. You would think if there was a bunch of feed conspiracy going on that the oldest ones especially would not lay at all, but they do. <laughs> uh, I've had 12 year olds and 13 year olds actually laying. Not very many eggs a year, but they were laying. So, you know, when you, you just gotta be careful who you take advice from on this internet. You gotta, you gotta watch how long have they had chickens? What do they know? What do they really know? Are they just parroting somebody else? Because I've seen things that people have never seen. I had a dwarf gene, a thyrogenous dwarf. Is there's different kinds of dwarfism in poultry. This I had thyrogenous dwarf gene sneak into my lines uh, from the Delawares that I hatched many years ago. Isaac was a dwarf gene carrier, and I didn't realize it. Anyway, that's a long story. But um, there's things I've seen that you cannot find in books. You are not going to find them in chicken keeping books. Uh, sauerkraut. Certain breeds of chickens that I've had. My breeder quality, Brahmas, had a lot of sauerkraut issues. A lot of impacted crop issues. Sluggish crops. Um, especially when they molt. My blue black splash Orpingtons from years ago had crop issues. And everybody eats the same thing. My barred Plymouth Rocks have never had a crop issue. They all eat the same food manage the same way. All of them free feed. I don't feed them once a day. They have feeders in there and the feed is available 24-7. Um, never had a problem with bar pulling rock in a crop. Never. And the only time I've had that with a coachin, bantam coachin, was my little old Xander was four and a half years old. And he was he was dying and he his crop stopped to function. So there's that. So you need to take your you need to take some of your knowledge from people who actually know some things. Um, and it takes a while to learn that stuff. You know, I mean, I didn't know everything at the beginning, but boy, was I a researcher. See, my friend Rachel that you met, she's an avid researcher. We have the same kind of mindset of like inquiring about things. We don't take anything at face value. And uh, I, that's, I researched chickens way before I even had them, before I got them. I had a coop built, predator proof coop built before I had them. Um, and that was, I think, 2000, the January 2005, I think is when I got my first group of chicks from a hatchery shipment to a feed store. And they began dying right after two years old, one by one. The longest lived one was six and a half and she only lived that long because she, I think, because she took two very long breaks. She went broody, which is bred out of most hatchery birds because people want eggs. They don't care for ch raising chicks. Um, because when they're broody, they don't lay. But I always let my chickens have their natural cycle. She didn't get eggs the first time because I didn't even have a rooster for fur legs. I didn't want to buy some because I didn't know what she was going to do. She almost died staying on a nest. I couldn't break her of it. The second time, she hatched two little barred Plymouth Rock babies. And I had a, a little coop next to her. It was, I mean, it was a pen in the same coop next to her full of about 25 chicks that I've hatched. And they were like two years old, I mean, two weeks old, two weeks old. And she kept wanting to go over there. And I thought, I don't know what she's going to do because these are not her chicks. I let her over there and she was a mama to all 25 plus those two. She was, I mean, I got pictures from those babies all over her. She loved it. She was a natural mom. Now she lived the longest because she took very long breaks. Her body got a rest. That's why I don't advocate putting light in your coops in the wintertime to try to force them, trick them into thinking the days are longer, trick, trick, trick their hormones into 
thinking the days are longer and producing eggs constantly. I realize that's why you got chickens, most of you. I realize that. But if you want the longevity that I get out of my birds, you let them have their natural cycles. You don't put light in the coop at night. If they stop laying, they're either sick or they're, it's a natural break, one or the other. Um, so that's the way you need to handle it. In far, that's my personal management opinion. And, uh, you know, you're taking advice for somebody who's had chickens live to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 and a half was my oldest living so far. So, um, and I don't buy chickens or chicks from anyone else. Biosecurity, chicken diseases, chickens don't get colds, there's chicken diseases. See, I'm talking about this because this is my favorite thing in the world. This is my favorite part of homestead and my chickens. And uh, it's been the favorite part of every year. Yes, there have been trials and tribulations with flocks, with birds, losing them. It's not easy to lose a bird who's 14 and a half years old. Think about your dog. It is the same thing because the intelligence of chickens is far beyond what most people think. They don't understand. Chickens have as many neurons in the front of their brain as an ape. That's smart. And you people think they're dumb. Dumb as rocks, they're not. Now, some are smarter than others. Let me put it that way. But anyway, I mean, it's just my favorite thing in the world. That's why I talk about chickens so much. And they give me eggs. And my gardens have rich black dirt because of the poop that they produce when they eat. The garden, the pine shavings, I let it compost with the poop in it, the high nitrogen. You can't just put it on plants because they'll burn the roots. But let it, let it compost a little bit and you will have the richest black dirt you've ever seen. So my chickens are the reason my homestead is at all successful. Um, and the other lay again, thank goodness. So um, that's been, as usual, every year my chickens are my favorite part of the year. I mean, some of the time they can get on my nerves. The so roosters, now I have too many roosters and we've had some fights that have, you know, it's resulted in some injury as you saw with Dane having missing half a waddle and Axel also is missing half a waddle. They, they were fighting each other. Um, but they're still alive and they're both sweet boys. They're just not, don't like each other anymore. The brothers decide they're not brothers no more. Uh, family squabble there. But dominance is the thing is the thing in the roaster world. So anyway, um, but you know, and then I was talking about Paul. I answered somebody, and I don't want to get into too much of what the conversation was because it's kind of a political thing. It was just somebody, I think it's the Salty Cracker, I think it was, had the thing. I think I posted in community. Salty Cracker had a thing about um, this actor who I'm like, why do I care about some Hollywood fluff ball? I don't care what he says. <laughs> Why does his, his opinion hold weight? Because everybody knows who he is. Well, not everybody knows who he is, but I do. Uh, Michael Rappaport. And uh, he had said, he had decided he was going to vote for Trump. Or he's saying, and he hates him. But he said, he, but he said compared those two boy, men, Biden and him. Yeah. So anyway, it was, it, that's the way the conversation started. I'm not trying to talk politics here. But um, this person, you know, I said, well, well, yeah, we need him, but we don't. My rap report's opinion is irrelevant. Somebody gets on there, obviously leftist, and gets this really sarcastic, what part of the administration did you like? You know, it, it's, it's an interesting thing how people, they believe if they're smart ass, that that gets their point across. Honey, I can do sarcasm with the best of them, and don't you know it? You know it, don't you? But if I, somebody wants to have a meaningful, civil conversation with me, I will have one. Not on this, not in the comment section. I mean, I'm not going to do the comment section. Um, in person, I'm talking about. If you want to not in, hurl insults, if you want to just have a conversation, we can talk about the policies and uh, the facts of situations without. Over, being overly emotional, I can if I'm talking to an individual, but a lot of people just can't. They scream the loudest and they're the most insulting, therefore they think they win and they get their point across, but really it's the opposite. And we deal with that all the time on the internet. Um, but it's been especially interesting in this last year and I won't even go into why. Um, but, you know, people have, have ceased to have civil conversations with each other anymore. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't think you get anywhere when you can't talk to each other. Same in a marriage. You don't get anywhere if you can't talk to each other. If you, if you 
use sarcasm and insults and blame, you don't get anywhere. Uh, but that's just supposed to be a fact of life. But see, that's logical and common sense, and those two things have fled the, fled the country, apparently. So anyway, but you know, this year has been interesting. Did I think I would be where I am at 67 years old? You know, I never really thought about it much. I'm glad that we made decisions, financial decisions, and we, we are not having money trouble because of that. Um, and every little decision adds up to a bigger benefit that people realize. Um, I'm happy to be living in this beautiful place. Um, I wish I was a little more isolated because it's grown a lot in the last 21 years. Um, and in the winter time, you know, you can see a lot further. And I, I like the summer when nobody can see all what's going on up here. You know, I'm out here today in bare feet. It is cool today, and it's about to rain and get down to the 30s again, the low 30s, or below freezing. But uh, for now, it feels darn good. And I just thought I'd sit out here and talk to you for a little bit and just kind of reflect on, you know, not the way the country's going exactly, but just my my life in in the mix in the midst of the insanity um and you know isn't that what preparing is about is actually thinking <laughs> thinking a little bit ahead and um deciding what is a good thing and what is not and uh then deciding on a course of action and uh, implementing it um, and people are not prepared for things. This is why I eat carnivore. This is why I've tried to better my health over the last few years. And uh, I think it's working because if you saw a picture of me a few years, oh, I don't know, but six, seven, eight years ago, you wouldn't even recognize that person, I don't think. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna close this up. Oh, these glasses are new. People always ask me, where do you get your glasses? Um, I get my glasses online at iBuyDirect, E-Y-E-B-U-Y, Direct, iBuyDirect. Um, they have excellent prices and they do a good job. So um, that's where I get all my glasses. <laughs> and I like having a wardrobe of glasses. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go, it's getting really cool out here. The winds are picking up. So I guess I better go put in my chickens. We'll catch y'all later. Have a good weekend, y'all. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.